Hi everyone, I'm going to solve a question on projectile motion. I did not cover projectile motion in the final exam prep session, so I'm going to do a question on projectile motion. A skier leaves the ramp of a ski jump with a velocity of 10 meters per second, 15 degrees above the horizontal. The ramp is placed so that the jump begins 2.5 meters above the ground level. Find the horizontal distance traveled before the jumper lands. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw the figure in here. So I have, let's say I have the ground and let's say I have the heel in here. That is my heel. And I have the skier is going to have a projectile motion like that. Yep. If I draw the velocity at the beginning, the initial velocity of the ramp V0, it makes an angle of 15 degrees with the horizontal. They are providing us with the initial height of the skier, which is equal to 2.5 meters. And you're asking for, you're asking for the horizontal distance that the skier travels, and that would be delta x. So we are looking for delta x. Okay, so when it comes to projectile motion question, you're going to need to draw a table. That would be the first thing that I do after drawing the figure. I'm going to draw a table to separate the x and y equations from each other. So I'm going to call this one x direction versus y direction. Good. Now let's look at the initial velocity. Now let's draw the initial velocity in here. I can break the initial velocity into two components. We have a two-dimensional motion. We cannot combine the x and y components. We always deal with the x equations separately. We deal with the y equations separately. That's why I have to break up v0 into two components x and y. So this would be, if this is 15 degrees, this would be v0 cos 15, that would be the x component, which is basically 10, 10 cos 15, and that gives me, that gives me 9.66 meters per second, 9.66 meters per second. And V0Y would be the Y component, V0Y would be the Y component um, of v, V0, and that is opposite to, to 15 degrees, and then you will get V0 sine 15, which I, if I sub in for V0, for V0, I will end up getting 2.59, 2.59 meters per second. Good. Now, it's very important to know that for a projectile motion in the x direction, the acceleration of the object is zero. So ax is zero. There is no acceleration along the x-axis. Whereas in the y direction, we have the gravitational acceleration, which is equal to minus g, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. That means that in the x direction, the velocity is constant. So if I look at the horizontal component of the velocity, basically the component along the x-axis, it does not change at all. Note that at the highest point of the projectile, you have a horizontal component. The velocity is not zero at the highest point of the projectile. It is actually equal to the horizontal component, which is going to be v0 cos 15 the whole time, which is 9.66 for this question. So the horizontal component remains constant, whereas the vertical component, it's a bit big at the beginning, yeah, and then it's going to decrease, decrease, and such that at the highest point it is zero, then it's going to grow back, but downward, yeah, there you go. And what I can do here, I can fill up for the, the horizontal and the vertical component of the, of the velocity. So v, Vx is equal to V0x. That means that the velocity is constant at any moment, and it, it is equal to 9.66 meters per second. 
v is zero y, the initial component of the y component of the velocity, that would be equal to 2.59 meters per second. Okay, because along the x-axis, because along the x-axis, the velocity is constant, acceleration is zero, the equation of motion is quite simple. That is equal to delta x. That is equal to delta x is equal to vx times a t. Well, I have vx, which is 9.66. If I can find the time, if I can find the time, I can find the horizontal distance. Another key to solving projectile motion questions is that you know that the x direction and the y direction, they share time. So a lot of times you find time from the y direction and you sub it into the x direction equations and then you will find out x. And, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing in here. In the y direction, though, you can write those five kinematic equations, but the one that I'm going to use today, it would be delta y equals v naught y times a t plus one half a t squared. Delta y is equal to minus 2.5. If you're wondering why delta y equals minus 2.5, it's because the final position, final position is zero because you're right on the ground minus the initial position of the skier, that's 2.5. So that will give you minus 2.5 here. There you go. V0y, you have a V0y, V naught y, which is 2.59 t. And a is minus 9.8 times a half. If you do that, you're going to get minus 4.9 t squared. Now, you can see that you have a quadratic equation in here on t. So we're going to take everything to one side and create a quadratic equation. 4.9 t squared minus 2.54 t minus 2.5. and you will end up getting zero on the other side. Good. And I'm going to solve this quadratic equation using a quadratic formula. Everybody knows that the formula is minus a b plus and minus b squared minus 4ac divided by, divided by 2a. Yeah? If you sub in a, b, and c into that equation, the t value that is a positive value and that's acceptable, you're going to get, it would be 1.03 seconds. Yeah, so I found the time of travel, I, find, I found the time of travel from y direction and then I sub it into the x direction equations. Delta x equals vx is 9.66 times the time that you found from y direction you end up getting delta x as 9.95 meters. And that would be the horizontal distance that the, the jumper has traveled. There you go. So the take home message here would be to separate the x equations from the y equations. You find time from the y equation, and then you sub it into the x equation and solve for delta x.